complete this little yin yang charm, these are the materials that I will be using. I'll be using two different shades of either sport weight or DK weight yarn. And I believe for this sake, this is sport weight yarn. A 3.5 millimeter hook. And lastly, of course, to sew it all together, I'll be using a tiny darning needle. All right, so to begin, I'm gonna start off with my very first shade and create a magic loop. So for this, I'm gonna cross over my yarn, reach into my loop, and pull up my long tail. And now from this point, I'm going to chain two. So here's one, and here is my second chain. And now to start creating our very first round of stitches, I'm gonna go into my center loop here and create eight single crochets. So there's my very first single crochet. I'm gonna go into the loop, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And there's my second single crochet. And now I'm just gonna add six more. So there's my third, making sure to go into that loop. There's my fourth. So there I go, I've got eight single crochet all sitting into my magic loop here. And now to tighten up this center circle here, I'm going to tug on my short tail and it's going to cinch up that center gap, nice and tight. And now to close off the circle, I'm going to go back into the very top of that original chain two, but here is where I need to change out my colors. So I'm going to insert my hook into the top of that chain two and instead of pulling through with our original shade, I'm going to add on my secondary color, just slip it right onto the hook, pull it through, and complete my circle with a slip stitch. So now I have that second color added on, and I can start on my second row. All right, so here after I've chained one, to make row two, I'm going to place two single crochet into every single stitch. So like I said before, I have eight single crochets sitting here in my magic loop. At the end of this row, I should end up with 16 single crochet. So to show you what that looks like, I'm gonna go right here into my very first stitch and place my first single crochet. Going right back into that very same stitch, I'm going to work my second. So as you guys can see here, I've got two cute little single crochets sitting all in that same stitch. Now I'm gonna move on to this next stitch here. I'm going to insert. There's my first. Going right back into that same stitch. And there is my second. And right here, I'm coming up on my eighth stitch in the row. And this is going to be my 15th for row two and going right back into that last stitch for my 16th single crochet. So now I have a nice uniform circle going on right here. And just like before, I'm going to find that chain one space and slip stitch into that. So I've entered that chain one space. And now I can slip stitch my circle closed. To start making row three, we're only going to be working into the first three stitches of the entire row. So to begin row three, I'm going to chain one. And now finding my very first stitch in the row right here, I'm gonna begin by placing one single crochet. So I'm gonna go into that very first stitch, place one regular single, Going right back into that very first stitch. Now I'm gonna place two half double crochets. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, place one half double. Again, yarn over, going right back into that same stitch. It's gonna start getting kind of packed. Insert, pull up a loop. And with three on, yarn over and pull through all three. And now for one last stitch into that very first stitch, I'm gonna place one double crochet. I'm gonna insert, 
pull up a loop with three on, yarn over and pull through two. And with two on, yarn over and pull through the last two. And now here's where we're gonna to begin to build upon that crazy yin yang shape. So now looking here at the second stitch in the row, I'm gonna begin by placing one treble crochet. So to make a treble crochet, I'm gonna yarn over once and then twice and go ahead into that second stitch, pull up a loop and with four on the hook, yarn over and pull through two. With three on, yarn over, pull through two. And with two left over, yarn over one last time and pull through the last two. And now going right back into that second stitch in the row, I'm gonna add a double treble. So to make a double treble, it's gonna start getting long. I'm gonna yarn over once, twice, and a third time. And I'm gonna insert my hook right back into that second stitch and pull up a loop with five sitting on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through two with four on, yarn over and pull through two. Now with three on, yarn over, pull through two again. And one last time, yarn over and pull through the last two. And now one last time, I'm gonna head right back into that same stitch. And this time I'm going to add a triple treble. So bear with me, I'm gonna yarn over once, twice, three times, and four times. And I'm gonna head right back into that stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. And now you should have five on, yarn over, pull through two. With four on, yarn over, pull through two. With three on, yarn over and pull through two. And to finish it up, yarn over one more time and pull through your last two. So I'm gonna move on to the third stitch in the row. So my next stitch is right here. And I'm gonna begin by placing a quadruple treble. So again, I'm going to yarn over once, twice, three times, four times, and five times. So right now I have six on the hook. I'm going to insert into that third stitch and pull up a loop. So right now sitting on your hook, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven loops. I'm going to yarn over and pull through two. With six on, Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. No surprises here. Yarn over, pull through two. And one last time, yarn over and pull through two. So there is my quadruple treble stitch. And lastly, I'm gonna go right back into that very same stitch and add one more quadruple treble. So yarn over once, twice, three, four, and five times. So you should have six loops in total on your hook. And as you can see, it is pretty bulky here in this third row, but this is exactly the shape that we need to complete the yin yang shape. So from this point, I'm going to go ahead and leave an extremely long tail that way I can weave in my ends and add in a few more stitches. But at this point, I'm just going to cut my yarn and now I'm gonna go ahead and make another one of these, except I'm going to reverse my colors. All right, so I've just finished up my matching piece and now it is time to start adding the two together. So we're gonna join them in kind of like a half circle fashion. And because I left a super long tail, it's gonna make it a little bit easier for us to connect it at the top of our circles here. So I want to connect the top of this stitch 
to pretty much the top of this circle right here. So I'm gonna count backwards and pretty much find my middle point right here. So I'm gonna count back, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and do five single crochet away from my corner piece right here. So I've inserted my hook back into my purple piece. I'm going to insert my hook into that fifth stitch. There we go. Tighten up my yarn a little bit. And now I'm gonna start placing single crochets. So I'm gonna pull through that loop. And now from here, I'm gonna yarn over and finish out my first single crochet. So now we are pretty much joined here at the very top of our circle. And now I'm just gonna work backwards to kind of fill in the gaps and finish out the circle. So I'm gonna find my very next stitch in the row and just place single crochets. Moving on, finding the next stitch. I'm just kind of doing this technique to make the yin yang look a little bit more complete, a little bit more full make it look finished instead of raw. I'm gonna go in here. And now lastly, I'm gonna go right back into this tiny little slip stitch spot right here and kind of fill in that uneven gap. And now at this point, I'm just going to pull on my yarn a little bit and kind of leave that tail there so I can start working on the opposite corner. Insert into our little red piece right here. And just like before, I'm going to count back about five stitch spaces from this little notch in our work. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert into that stitch. And now create a single crochet to join the two pieces together. I'm gonna pull up a loop, yarn over, and create my first single crochet. So as you guys can see here, if you bend your work a little bit, shape it up, it starts to form that really cute pattern. And just like before, I'm gonna finish out this top row. And right here is my fifth single crochet. Oh, maybe it's six. That's okay, I'm gonna go in here anyways. And now at this point, I can go ahead and tie off my knots here and here, and we can get to working on sewing up our center. All right, so now my very last step is to sew together this little center seam and finish up the pattern. So I've already weaved through one of my colors tails, and now I'm just gonna pick up stitches all along this edge here and sew it up. So now my back is all sewed up together and my yin yang is complete. So now you guys can kind of take these little stitch skills and you can apply them to a larger piece if you guys would like to make a granny square out of this pattern. Go ahead and grab some worsted weight or even some chunky weight and throw together a larger sized yin yang. 